Did you know that around 126 million of women in the world are believed to be missing as a result of parents choosing to abort female fetuses? These are the data of the UN Population Fund. There is a clear correlation between this data and gender-based violence and discrimination against, against women. Before I explain how, I'd like to tell you Eva's story. Eva was a young woman that contacted Women's Rights Center because of continuous violence that she suffered from her husband and his family members with whom they lived. At the time, she had two daughters of preschool age. Eva married young after her parents decided not to support her university studies. They claimed they cannot support two students because her, her brother was already studying. But Eva told us that it was always like that. She was the one helping out at home, while her brother's only duty was to study. So problems started from the very onset of Eva's marriage. Her husband was turn traditional. He expected from her to do everything about household, to take care of children, to help his family members. And he also wanted from her to give birth to an heir, a son. Eva hoped that a birth of a son may help her gain her husband's and his, his family's respect. However, that didn't happen. Eva had two pregnancies after the birth of their daughters, but she terminated them both because of her husband's pressure when she found out from the blood test that they would get yet another girl. She did the blood test in the private lab although it was illegal to reveal the sex of the fetus before the 12th week of pregnancy. However, the doctor accepted to do it because Eva was desperate and such tests yield serious profits. So Eva felt like she had no choice because of her husband's constant disrespect, insults, and threats that he will kick her out of house if she don't give birth to a son. So once his violence became unbearable, Eva decided to return to her parents. But the trouble was, even at her parents' house, Eva and her daughters were not welcomed. Girls are not carrying our family name, they said. Let us remember that this is just one of too many stories of women that are experiencing violence while we speak. And one of too many I heard during my long-term engagement in women's rights. The desire to have a son is too prevalent in Montenegrin society. The emphasis on importance of male offspring in continuation family name and tradition is so dominant and powerful. And daughters on the other side are considered to be a burden, or as people here used to say, someone else's supper, someone else's worry, because daughters usually take their husband's surname when they marry and cease to belong to their primary family. Different brands, different person's responsibility. The culture of unwanted daughters is a matter of even bigger concern today, when we know how the modern technology has been abused. Genetic tests are used by many parents in order to decide whether to continue or terminate the pregnancy, depending on the sex of the fetus, just like in Eva's story. But that technology, although it provides additional method for sex selection, it is not the root cause of it. Just like any violence against women, this negative practice come, comes from uh, deeply embedded patriarchal norms that privilege men and put women into an equal, an, an equal position. Son preference is a serious problem in, uh, for a small country of 628,000 people such as Montenegro. It is harmful for women, but it also damages our demographic structure. So that nowadays Montenegro lacks more than 3,000 women of reproductive age. We already have schools and kindergartens with classes and groups attended mostly by boys and very few girls. So this negative tradition had serious consequences even in other countries. In China, for example, an estimated 1.1 million more men than women were born in 2005 and more than 32 million uh, boys than girls under 20. Around 94% of unmarried persons aged from 28 to 49 in China were men. 
In India, the situation was very similar also. In some parts of the country, as many as 25% more boys were born than girls, which is far more than the national ratio, which amounts from 102 to 105 boys per 100 girls. Social implications of this problem are also troubling. It can lead to increase in sexual exploitation of women, in forced prostitution, human trafficking for the purposes of forced marriages, and other forms of human rights violation. But there are also other projections that point to the increased rate of men seeking for partners, but also point to a greater propensity toward violence and aggression, which is associated with antisocial behaviors and crime, all of which may cause a serious threat to the so social stability and security. So here we have a problem that affects women's rights, demographics, individual quality of life, social relationships, and society as a whole. That was the reason why we at Women's Rights Center, together with the agency McCann, started a campaign to raise awareness about, about gender-biased sex selection, which results in some preference and selective abortions. But we wanted particularly to point out that this phenomena cannot be understood or resolved without a clear reference to the broader context, and particularly without the wholesale measures against regressive and patriarchal norms. We call the campaign unwanted because we wanted to underline the cause of the problem. We wanted to change the social norms that are so persistent despite the emancipation and are so deeply engraved in our day-to-day -day lives that the society don't question them, accepts them unwittingly, and don't, don't question neither their causes, ethics, and particularly not their consequences. The campaign steered up the public in Montenegro. It is always the case when you raise the issue which is challenging tradition or some deeply established norms and beliefs. However, our message with this campaign was quite clear, I think. And therefore, it, it, for us it was normal that this is happening because it happened many times before. In the past, when we were talking about violence against women in Montenegro, when we raised the issue of human trafficking for the first time, and when we were opening the first shelters for women in Montenegro, we had the same reaction. It happened again because people cannot accept that something horrible is happening in Montenegro. And we again revealed a hidden discrimination that is so widespread and happening immediately after conception. We also had a lot of support from women, but also from men, particularly from fathers of daughters who didn't want their daughters to, bury the, to carry the burden of this horrible tradition. They posted the photos of them with their little girls with the sign, to me, you were always wanted. It was very encouraging and motivating for us. However, the disbelief of, of society that this is happening is something that is quite common. Patriarchy is so prevalent that you don't notice it. It's just like that proverbial mountain that you don't see from its foothills. So you need somebody to change your perspective. There were people who questioned how we can fight against selective abortion and at the same time um, advocate for women's rights to safe and legal abortion. Our stand here is very clear. Limiting women's rights and denying them access to safe services is something that can only increase the risks of safety for women associated with unsafe abortions and will also increase their vulnerability. While the, on the other hand, it doesn't tackle the cultural context that actually creates this problem. So banning abortions, including selective abortions, will not and did not stop the problem. There are numerous human rights documents that established the rights, the, the rights of women to, that the rights of women are violate, violated if they, go un, uh, if they undergo unsafe abortion. Because they were denied the access to, to uh, safe medical services, the basic reproductive rights of women and girls stand on their right to autonomously decide about their own bodies without coercion, discrimination, or violence. So one, once again, 
the message of the campaign was clear. We wanted to raise the issue about social norms that don't value women and girls, but at the same time result in selective abortions and prenatal sex selection, but at the same time with full respect to women's reproductive rights. So within the campaign, we also launched a petition that was signed by more than 6,000 people asking from Montenegrin government to do something to stop this horrible problem from happening. And although it is too early to attribute this to the campaign, we saw a small improvement. However, the problem still exists. In 2018, 107 per one, uh, newborn boys were bo was born per 100 girls. That means that our struggle is not finished. Our rights depend on us, on our vigilance and initiative. We need to change the mindset that don't value women and girls, and we need to deliberately involve men and women into this struggle. Boys and girls need to earn equality from an early age. We need to empower women to bring autonomous and informed decisions. We need to pre prevent unethical medical services aimed at financial gain and not to the well-being of, of women. It is unacceptable nowadays that modern technology is used not for the benefit, but, but for the detriment of women. For a start, try to imagine a world where there are no women. Would you like to live in such a world? No. no. Me neither. Thank you. <laughs>